Christmas more. favorite Christmas carol they like us to sing before we get started. Anyone? Jill? You don't have nothing. Anyone? Yes. Yes, Sylvia. Mary's boy child. Oh, Lord. We're going to challenge him. You're going to ask. I mean, I didn't mean that like I don't like the song. It's just, yeah. <laughs> All right, let me find it. All right, cool. We can do it. I got it. We would have done it even if I didn't have it. I would have made something up. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Here we go. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the holy Bible said. Shepherds watched their flock find it. They saw a bright new shining star. They heard a choir from heaven sing. The music seemed to come from afar. But now hear the angels sing. New kings born today. And all will live forevermore. Because of Christmas Day. Now Joseph. I don't know if I'm hearing anything. It's hard to tell with a mask. Um, John, could I hear myself a little bit more in this speaker? Please and thank you. Da -da -da. That's good. Thank you so much. How about up here? Anyone have a request up here? I put you right on the spot. Christmas song request. Bells. All right, we're going to do Jingle Bells. Here we go. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go.
get the spirit moving first thing in the morning. All right. Let's do first uh, Oh Holy Night. I think we can do better than that. Maybe, oh, the mic wasn't on, so maybe you didn't realize that we'd started. Good morning, Bedford United. Good morning. There we go. That's a Matt Fillier kind of good morning, isn't it? You, you think you can do better? No? All right, we'll try one more time. Good morning, Bedford United. Good yeah, there we go. My name is Bruce McCulloch, and I'm the presider for the month of November, and it is my great pleasure to be with you this morning on the first Sunday of Advent as we move into the celebration of Christ's birth. And uh, it reminds me of the first time I wore this white jacket. It was my birthday in October, and it was uh, during my presiding month that year, four years ago. And, uh, and yeah, so I thought I'd bring this out once again and, uh, and celebrate the season as well as uh, the birth of Christ in that way. We have a couple of announcements from, from me this morning at 5.30 this uh, this day, 515. The, there'll be the nativity uh, taking place here in the sanctuary. This is where the scenes are acted out for the, uh, the birth of Christ by the, the young people. And then at six o'clock, we have the tree lighting. And uh, as we know, at six o'clock this evening, it'll be dark. And so this is a chance to, uh, it's a bit of a fundraiser to remember a loved one with uh, sponsorship of certain lights in the uh, in the Christmas tree, which is uh, is here uh, on site in the belfry, and Matt, I think you've got something to say. I do, and the thing that I have to remind everybody about, I'm glad our administrator extraordinaire is here because she knows all and sees all. And what she saw was there were people contacting the office and saying, "What's going on at church? There seems like the, I can find everything out last minute." It's like the reason that's happening is only 50 percent of you are opening your emails. So open the email, and you will see all the things that are happening in good time. 
<laughs> so we just wanted to remind everybody about that because there is there's so much on the go uh, Paul and I were saying uh, before church started today even across the HRM for people who are in the Halifax area tuning in uh, there's a lot happening like with festivals of lights and tree lightings and things that are going on all across the city in our lives schools church there's a lot so uh, it's a little bit of back to normal I think which is not not a bad thing to see in that way but uh, do check your email because that'll be really helpful for you to keep on top of what's happening and uh, you got a little taste from the amazing choir and uh, and Mr. Tony there this morning of all the beautiful music to share the nativity will be lovely as will the tree lighting we're gonna have hot chocolate at the tree lighting outside uh, so that'll be great and I know the little people are singing at the live nativity so that'll be great Bruce yeah. Um, the one thing that I did want to remind everybody about uh, as well today as we work our way through the season uh, is that we're going with a group of United Church clergy across the country, I'm one of them, who are called the Worship Collective. And we noticed that churches in this big div digital revolution were taking a lot of content from the United States and from different places and so on. And we said, ah, we can do that. And so people across the country are working on that. So we're going to share some of that digital ministry today and our theme is something bigger. We'll be exploring that in Advent. And as we gather around the table for communion today, I hope that you've had a chance to go and get your uh, communion elements at home, set your table, and get ready for that feast. Um, we remember that we live and we work and we worship on lands that are the Wabanaki, right? The people's lands. They are the Mi'kmaq lands, right? We live on Turtle Island. And so we acknowledge our need and our call for truth and reconciliation and to seek justice in all things. Uh, and we take that very seriously in the United Church and here at Bedford United, we're trying to live it out each day. That is something bigger indeed that we are a part of. So as we all kind of arrive, I'm sure if you felt like me this morning, it was busy, lots going on, trying to get out of the house for the people who are here at home. Maybe a little less busy, but maybe not if there's uh, all kinds of stuff going on in your home life right now. We just want to take a moment before we kind of move into the service, and we're going to ask Anne to light our welcoming uh, candle in a second. But before we do that, let's just arrive. Let's just listen to our bodies. You're safe. You're connected here together in so many different ways. We're all together as one community, right? The body of Christ gathered such as we are. So let's just take a deep breath with me, and then I'm going to ring our singing bowl. I'm just going to let that ring. And then I'll ask Anne to break that silence. So let's just take a deep breath. You ready? One, two, three. Just breathe. And hold that breath. And let it go. Be assured that in this place, God is. Good morning, BUC. Good morning. God is here. All the time. All the time. God is here. All are welcome. All the time. All the time. All are welcome. Now I'd like you to join me in our Advent prayer. On clear winter nights, taut with cold and alive with the grandeur of God, we look up and watch for a star that rises again. At the beginning of this season of longing and expectation, we gather to make a new beginning in hope. We remember that God's word of love is with us always, planting seeds for us to tend given root to possibility. Amid seasonal songs and glad gatherings, we prepare ourselves for the one who comes. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, as Tony gets ready with the choir to lead us in a beautiful piece of music that was written just for this season, I'm going to invite Susan and Maya to come forward. Oh, 
Advent begins in the anticipation of the apocalypse, the end of the world. Hope is a deep trust that Advent ends in a new heaven and a new earth. However, we find ourselves this Advent season as a pandemic drags on with the threat of climate disaster hanging over us in financial distress. We trust and hope that we participate in a story that is bigger. God is already among us, but soon we will know it. The Advent is a is promised that we are part of something bigger. We light our first candle in hope. open our hearts. So this is a great time to pass the peace as we've often done in church and in those days we might uh, um, shake hands or something like that. Today perhaps fist bumps or just a simple namaste but I'm going to ask you to get up and look to your neighbors and at least acknowledge them with your eyes and uh, perhaps uh, do a fist bump whatever you're comfortable with doing but it's a, it's a chicken wing type of uh, elbow type of thing but uh, something to uh, exactly. That's, that's great. I mean, it's, it's a tradition in many cultures of, of hospitality to, to welcome people into homes, and, and here we are in, in God's home, the church. So, uh, so good. Um, and next is Tony with a couple of uh, songs, I think. I would like you to stand this morning if you're able to do that. And we're going to sing again the song that we taught you last week, God with us, Jesus Emmanuel. And you echo what I sing, okay? He walked where I walked. He walked where I walked. He stood. 
stood where I stand. He stood where I stand. He felt what I feel. He felt what I feel. He understands. He understands. He knows my frailty. He knows my frailty. Shared my humanity. Shares my humanity. Tested in every way. Tested in every way. He knew no sin. He You should assume when you see me that Tony's going to want us to clap. <laughs> so when we get to the chorus that's banging out, all right? Why do you really want to hear it? I mean, the choir just sounds amazing on that chorus. So I want you all to join in on that chorus. Here we go. He walked where I walked. He walked where I walked. faithful, a carol that everyone knows. We'll do verse 1, 3, and 5, if some of you really know this song by memory, as I do. Now that I said that, I will tangle up the words.
Wow, Tony, you really put us, our vocal pipes, in our workout this morning. I'm feeling Christmassy already. This is great. Okay, there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're just, uh, come on, everybody. All good. We're just caring for each other here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're going to call 911. We just got... Yeah, yeah we're, we're on it. So everybody online, just hang on. Everybody in the house. We're just caring for each other. We have some pretty amazing people here. We're all together in care. Okay. We're good? All right. We can wait all the time in the world when someone's having a tough time. Friends, we'll look after all of that. We're all in good hands. And we'll care for each other as we always do here at BUC. What we're going to share in now is uh, we have a couple of videos that we're going to share uh, with you. So this is from uh, Greg, uh, is our first up. He's in the Worship Collective, and he runs a really cool program called the Wilderness Church out in BC. And they do some pretty neat uh, work. And so he's going to do a little scripture introduction for us. And then we're also going to share a pre-recorded kind of reading of the Gospel of Luke today. And the center of that story is the fig tree and Jesus' teaching around that. And Greg is going to lead all that off of. Very, very interesting reading. And he's going to be like, what's up with the fig tree? So we're going to turn it over to Greg. Let's look. Tree in the Bible. It pops up just about from one cover to the other. It's the third tree mentioned in the Adam and Eve creation story. Tree of life, tree of knowledge, then the fig tree. And Jesus mentions fig trees several times, even causes one to shrivel up and die. What's up with the fig tree? Some speculate the fig tree actually represents Israel and the complex relationship that Jesus had with some of his own neighbors and his own people. Some say the fig tree represents prosperity or sufficiency. And then some say that the fig tree represents prophecy or wisdom. It is hard to imagine something so small and spindly being a source of prophecy or wisdom. And in this case, in Luke, Jesus uses the fig tree to convey a sense of time, saying the fig tree is in blossom, so summer is coming. Both in the sense of don't worry, be patient, summer is still a ways off, but also quick panic, summer is coming. It's one of those paradoxes with which our tradition is right. Yes, the Son of Man is coming soon, but that doesn't mean it's the end of all things or the eschaton. Yes, all things will soon be revealed, but no, we haven't solved all of the world's problems just yet. Yes, we as individuals are significant, and yet there is something so much greater, so much bigger happening and we get to be a part of something so much bigger. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. 
Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. We're all good. Nothing I like more than watching a community that knows how to care for each other, everybody. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Right? All right. Whew. This is a very full Advent one, is it not? Very busy, right? Lots going on. All right, everybody. So I got to thinking, like many of you uh, this past week, about my Christmas list. How's that going for all of you? Right? Are all the decorations where you put them in Christmas of 2020? Right? In the mental state we were all in, you could just put your hand right on it, right? It was right there. Uh, has everybody figured out how you're going to get your packages where across the country, by what time, according to Canada Post? Uh, uh, well, I see some shakes, yeah? And I know that as I watched the news this morning about, uh, I love this name, Omicron, very ominous. I know that on my Christmas list will be toilet paper. Lots of toilet paper for 2022, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, so go get it. But in all seriousness, I was out in the department store aisles, you know, like many of us are these days, and wow, is it ever a lot like normal, right? I was standing in the aisle, I could hear the jingle jangle music going, you know. There are just stores that are, have shelves full of stuff, people bustling their carts around, sometimes politely, sometimes a little pokey, right? All of it feels very normal compared to last year. You know, the Black Friday deals are out there. I'm not really sure how much a deal anybody's getting right now, but they're trying. It feels like normal, and that's so far removed in those aisles of the department store from what the gospel has been saying is our role, our life of faith during the Advent season. It's a far cry from looking up and noticing the sun and the stars and the moons and the roar of the waves, right? So I kind of think like Luke's gospel, you know, like is not really so concerned about our Christmas list. Luke's gospel is kind of like concerned about our apocalypse list, right? How's our apocalyptic list going? Let's, let's do a check because I can see four items on the list this morning. Luke's community, they said to us, there's going to be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. Well, for like over 40 years, climate scientists have been saying to us, there'll be heat domes and droughts and floods and melting ice caps. Sea levels will rise, populations will have to migrate, there'll be chaos in people's economies and our society and our culture. Check, check, check on number one, <laughs> like those signs are there. The second sign is that there'll be the roar of the waves and the sea, this distress, right? Well, Greg is in BC and we were talking to him. People in BC know all about the roar of water right now. They do it, know about it in Cape Breton and in the west coast of Newfoundland where many of my friends are still cut off right? Is climate change the cause of all that? Not the only cause, but it definitely does not help these events. So check on the roar of the waves. Third sign, fear and foreboding and distress coming upon the whole earth, leaving people breathless. Breathless is the English word for the Hebrew faint, right? I can't think of a better way to talk about COVID-19, can you? That it leaves us breathless. 
And this is not just the poor and the marginalized countries that haven't been able to breathe for like generations. I think like 7% of the poor on planet Earth have gotten a vaccine. In Canada, we're on round number three right now. 7% of the world has only gotten one. One. 7%. So this is something that doesn't just affect the poorest of nations, but the whole G8. Everybody is being affected by this, including the powerful. And Luke also says, you know, the powers will be shaken. Well, you know, whether I talk to a CEO or like my neighbor down the street, everybody feels like powers are shaken by what to do about poverty and inflation, global warming and systemic racism and homelessness and hunger and disease and this raging pandemic that we're finally getting our eyes on, not just COVID-19, but mental health and addictions, right? It's been said that the way we live on planet Earth has been temporarily disrupted by the pandemic. I humbly submit that Luke's gospel says to us, the way that humanity lives together and on the planet needs to be absolutely altered, not just temporarily disrupted. And the signs are as clear as that giant star that appeared in the sky guiding everyone's way home that we talk about at Christmas. You know, when something is bigger than us, and it's chaotic, and it's unpredictable, it's overwhelming, right? Anybody feel overwhelmed in the last year? Any hands out there at home? Yeah, uh uh-huh, right? And so it's a natural human response. When we face that, we just want to make our lives as small as possible. Like, I I can't worry about all this stuff. I just got to get out of bed in the morning and go to my work and and get home and do the basics. That's all I've got room for. The thing about a quantum universe is no matter how small you make things, it's just more expansive. The smaller the particle you look at, the more there is to look at. Like, there's always more. We're always part of something bigger. And that natural reaction is that gift of survival when we get overwhelmed as human beings to make things small, right? It's a gift. The reality of survival is that we weren't created to survive forever in that mode. It gets us through a small amount of time so we can begin to thrive. We're made to thrive not just to live in survival mode. And so the gospel has some language around this for us today. It says, be on guard. In other words, pay attention, lest your heart gets weighted down by, I love these words, dissipation and drunkenness, right? I love those words. But so we'll, we'll translate into our language right now today. Be weary that your heart doesn't get weighed down in distraction, and willfully checking out of reality. There is a lot of willful checking out of our reality right now. It's hard out there. And you know, it doesn't matter if I talk to friends in my church community, outside my church community, there's this constant theme. Like in the last six months, I can't tell you how many people have called me and said, Matt, you're never going to believe this, but my marriage blew up. My, my family imploded. My, like, my work life is done. Like I've lost my job. I, I can't work anymore. Right? And they all have this common theme when that conversation starts, is they all talk about, it's like, where have I been in the last year? It's like I'm walking through this fog, and I, like, I just woke up when all this blew up. It was like a trap that went off, and I went, oh my goodness, when, how did this happen? How did I get here? What was I doing? What was happening around me? And when, when they look up and they begin to notice, they can see how all this came to pass. They begin to see that story, right? Can anybody relate to feeling like you're in that fog? And the ironic part of that for us is when we make things really small and we go into survival mode, we always have to be part of something bigger. So that community, many of whom are here today, that sustain us, that remind us of this spirit, this something bigger within us than what's going on in our daily grind, right? We retreat from that, and then suddenly when those things blow up, (laughs) we run right back to that, right? And go, I got to reconnect to that. Right? My life is overwhelming right now. I think that those are the actions of Advent, right, that Luke reminds us of today. we got to look up, we got to notice, and we got to speak up the word of hope that the Spirit has placed in our hearts. And so this reading in Luke, I really think it's good news for two reasons, believe it or not. There's two good reasons here. First one is, you know this reading is like 2,000 years old? So people 2,000 years ago were going, we live in apocalyptic times, my life is completely overwhelming, and how in the name of God am I going to get to tomorrow? They were asking that then, right? We are not the only human beings to experience this. As my other prophet would say, so do all people who live to see such times, they feel this way. Thank you, Gandalf. And the second one 
is what Jesus said. If you caught his words there, in the midst of this frame he lays out for everybody, he says, this will come. This will go. My words will remain. What's he talking about? I think he's talking about the word of life, right? The source, the great spirit, the energy that animates the entire cosmos from the smallest particle that makes you, you, to the grandness of a universe that we don't even have a computer that can calculate the size of this thing. It's incredible how big it is, right? Death doesn't exist apart from life. Death is a part of life. Life is God, and God is here all the time, regardless of the season. God is always creating something new. You know, Paul said to us a long time ago, he said, when we talk about hope, who hopes for what they see? That's not hope. No one hopes to see all of this. We hope for what is unseen, and we wait for it with patience. We look up. We notice We speak up the word of hope in our hearts. We make it flesh in our lives by the choices that we make. And Jesus uses the fig tree as kind of a bellwether for this, right? How we're doing. So like if the tree looks really bare, says Jesus, you can tell we're in the fall and the winter of our current age. That means times are going to be hard. And they sure are out there. And Jesus also, as Greg said, points to the cycle of life and says, your redemption's on its way. Like, Like, that's not even a question. Spring and summer are on their way, but there will be new growth. When spring and summer come and the tree sprouts again, there are new branches that grow. There are new buds that grow. The rhythm of life stays the same, but there's always new life. There's always new music being sung every single time. You don't get to the new place by saying, I'm going to live the exact same way and make the same choices I always made and expect a different result. There's a word for that. It's not faith or hope, right? The tree of life we're talking about on the grand scale, or the tree of your life in particular, if it feels a little barren this morning, a little Charlie Brown-like, remember something today. That tree is rooted in the soil, and that soil is in the earth, and the earth is in the solar system, and the solar system is part of the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is part of the cosmos, like We are all part of something so much bigger than just this constant feeling that we can have. What beautiful hope that is. I want to show you something. I'm going to ask Brian to flip the slide here. So I don't know if you can see. At home online, you can see if we're streaming. But if you can see in the congregation here and in person today, there's a little green dot up there. So scientists, one day they were outside and they went, there is no light emanating from that spot. That's really weird in our universe that we can't see any light there. So they said, huh. They, what did they do? They looked up. They noticed. And they said, we're going to take the Hubble Space Telescope and we're going to point it at that spot and find out what is going on there. Brian, can you flip that slide? That's what they saw with the telescope. Okay, so just take a second to take that in. That place where we couldn't see anything, this was what was unseen the whole time, sitting there, just waiting. Brian, can you flip that side? Every dot in that image is an entire galaxy. Each galaxy contains up to a trillion stars. Every single one of those stars has a system of planets, more than likely. There are over 10,000 galaxies in that tiny little dot of our night sky alone. And that has been there the whole time that we couldn't see. Can you flip that slide for me, Brian? All from what looked like nothing. All from what looked like nothing. Right? Paul said, we don't, who hopes for what we see? We hope for what's unseen. We wait for it with patience. We are part of something bigger. Thanks, Brian. I think that um, one of the places that I've seen this, I'll write a little blog entry on our Facebook page uh, this week because I've been paying attention to this theme for the last few weeks. But one of the places I really saw this happen for Bedford United Church was when we gathered at the crossing for the Bedford Christmas Parade. Bedford Christmas Parade is something that like happens every year, you know, right? Like everybody knows how that's supposed to go and it's beautiful, lovely, and wonderful. And like all Christmas parades, they're great. They're great community events. But this one was different. We served over 300 slices of pizza that night, and over 200 cups of hot chocolate. I've never seen so many people in so long standing together, eating together, drinking together, telling stories together. We haven't done that in two years, right? 
People haven't sat around a fire together and put their feet up and warmed their hands and told the story of where they are in their lives and shared jokes and laughed and cried together in two years. I had people who came up and hugged me who were like, Matt, I have not seen you in two years. It's not because, like, I hate the church or I'm <laughs> angry about something or I'm complaining about something. My life is just a mess. And we get to hug each other outside with masks on, right? <laughs> Look, we haven't done that in two years. I had somebody who said to me, they were like, I, we brought a bunch of people who had never been to church uh, to the crossing, and uh, one of my friends said to me, he looked at me, and he was like, this is church? I said, no, man, this is communion. This is sacrament. This is way beyond that idea. And he was just marveled. You know, here we were watching little kids run around singing Christmas carols, dancing their hearts out as that parade went down the street. It's like, wow, like this is not just another Christmas parade that has to get organized, check it off the list. This is something bigger. We are part of something bigger on every level, whether we're talking about our own life and what we're dealing with today, whether we're talking about what church means in the midst of this pandemic, whether we're talking about what it means to be Canada right now in the midst of this, or as a planet in the midst of all this going on, we are part of something bigger. And Advent calls us to say, look up, notice, Hope for what is not yet seen. We hope in what we haven't seen yet, and we wait for it, and we work for it, and we pray for it, and we choose it in the choices given to us every day together as the body of Christ. We speak it as God does, and that word becomes flesh and lives among us even now. My friends, this Christmas, hope is still on the way. Friends, the spirit in me honors the spirit in you. And all the people said, Amen.
Oh, friends, it is good to be here. I hope if you're at home, you've got your, uh, your bread, beverage of some kind. At church, we have this amazing vessel right here. So we won't ask you to open it yet, but Bedford United's looked after all of that. So I'm so glad everyone's got their communion. The choir also has theirs, which is great. Friends, as we gather around this table, it's really remarkable to remember that it's not ours. Right? In a world that is obsessed with who owns what, this ain't ours. This is God's table, right? This is the Spirit's table. It's the table of Jesus. And Jesus welcomed anyone to eat and to drink with him. Everyone of all walks of life. And so all are truly welcome here. Friends, may God be with us. May we remember that God is here among us. Let's open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to God. We open them to God and to one another let us give thanks to God. It's right to give our thanks and our praise. Beloveds of God, we are invited to come and gather at the table of love and liberation, to open our eyes and feast on the dreams of God, to be nourished by but a taste of what God desires to do among us. God calls us from institutional halls of power from shelters and the streets. God calls us from classrooms and pulpits, mm -hmm. Zoom meetings, and prison cells. God calls us, as we are, from wherever we are, to come and be rooted in the solidarity of Christ, who lives and loves on the margins, in unexpected places, and in the everyday. God whispers, come, be nourished, live abundantly turning from all the claims that blessings flow from money and power or control. Come and love relentlessly, following Christ on paths of uncertainty, taking risks for one another, calling down unjust power from its many and its varied places, and lifting up the lowly, the impoverished, the burdened, the taken for granted, the forgotten, the silenced. To answer the call of Christ is to find ourselves. Despite our social location, despite how small we can sometimes feel, and instead choosing to align ourselves with the marginalized, the oppressed, the outcast, and the isolated, with the faith that all together we might birth new possibilities of healing, of connection, of freedom from everything that destroys. To answer the call of Christ is to live into that spectacular view where we are called towards something bigger, choosing to follow the deep yearning that enables us to open ourselves to God, to one another, beyond our judgments, our arrogance, our pride, beyond feelings of inadequacy, isolation, and simply existing, where we do live into something bigger, beyond ourselves, as transformed, beloved community. When these desires are rooted in our hearts and our eyes are opened, we open beyond ourselves to the yes of God. Blessed are those, Jesus said, who hunger and thirst, knowing rooted deep within that there is something more, something bigger, bigger yet, for they will be filled. And so let us come to the table, expectant, eager, open to tasting the rich blessings before us, born from unexpected places, unexpected people, and unanticipated experiences. In this meal, we remember the life and death and resurrection of the one who still takes on flesh in everyday people and in everyday experiences, in everyday places right here among us. On that night he would be arrested, Jesus gathered his friends and companions. In the midst of a tense and dangerous time, they found each other at table connecting over lived experiences and faith. As they did so, 
Jesus took bread and gave thanks to God, broke the bread, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he also took the cup and gave thanks to God, and he shared it with all of his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we pray together. Come, Holy Spirit. Breath of God, inspirer of life, settle on these gifts and all who gather here that we may be transformed. In our remembrance of the breaking of the bread, the sharing of the cup, that in word and deed and the choices we make every day, we would make your radical love and eternal potential known. May your grace make all things new, both seen and unseen. And may we be sent out into the world, remembering as we go, we are called from where we are to live into God's invitation to something far bigger than we can imagine. May we bring that invitation and vision to all those we meet along the journey. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Diane, it's an honor and a privilege to be sharing the table with you today. It's very cool Diane is with us at least until the beginning of January, which we're very thankful for. And uh, this is my favorite liturgical moment in the pandemic. I'm going to invite you in church to pop your top. <laughs> Very serious at Bedford United Church. Friends, I invite you to take your bread, take, eat, and remember that we are part of something bigger. And in the same way, I also invite you to take your cup and to drink this, remembering in your heart we are part of something bigger. Let us taste and see. From, I love that sound, I gotta tell you. That is the sound of a church still being able to have communion. It is precious in my sight. But well, friends, that little piece of bread, that little cup of juice, in the face of all the big things we, we encounter in our daily lives, what difference can that make? In the United Church, we remember it's not the bread or this juice, the fruit of the vine that's changed. It's this that transforms the life that's in here, the life that's out there. So let's take all of that spirit that is within us and one step at a time, one choice at a time, one word at a time, let's transform our world together in the spirit of hope. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. With faith, we watch and wait for Emmanuel, God with us. God has given each of us what we need to be vessels of promise and to share that with the world. May what we gather and offer become a living sign of God's vision and our hope. Amen. So the traditional means of offertory have uh, been superseded by COVID for some time, but. I'm pleased to announce that next week we will return to what Matt calls old school. We'll pass the plate. <laughs> and uh, in the meanwhile, there is a plate at the back of the, uh, of the church. And of course, there is PAR or there is the means of transferring uh, funds through uh, e-transfer.
At this stage, Tony, you've got another uh, hymn for us. And before he does, before he does, um, I just was remembering for Diane and I, there we go, for everybody online, for Diane and I, we're going to serve communion to the kids. I wrote a lovely blessing for this guy that I'm going to take responsibility for right now. If you don't like it, you can send it to my office. <laughs> You're good. And Tony's going to guide us in song. But Diane and I are going to go and share the bread and the cup with our kids. They meet separately from us for Sunday school. So, friends, I will see you after. Absolutely. And you are in the best of hands. I'd like you to stand if you're able. Uh, before we sing, just a couple things. Number one, what time is the nativity scene? 515. So we need some singers for the live nativity. So if you feel like you want to sing along, we're just going to cluster up here, at, and I'll play the piano, and we'll sing during the nativity, okay? So just need a handful of voices for that. Second of all, our Christmas concert, A Christmas Hope, is coming up on the 12th. Continue to spread the word. It will be a free will offering. People have asked if there are tickets. There are no tickets. You don't have the RSVP because there's two services. So share that and also that. Also let your friends know it will only be streamed once during each service and then it will be removed from the internet. So got to be here or be there to see it. Let's sing together. There was a child in Galilee dreaming Mary. I know this is a lot of people's favorite song at Christmas time. So sing with us as we bring this to you. Tony, that's one of my favorite songs, so I appreciate uh, having you sing that with us, or having us all sing it together. Um, 
I'd be remiss if I didn't put in a small plug for a choir that I'm a member of, Nova Voce Men's Choir. We're doing a Christmas concert with a few songs that aren't Christmas this coming Friday at St. Andrew's United Church. If you want more details, come see me after the service. Uh, so the blessing. This one uh, was supposed to have Matt over there doing the, uh, the actions, so I'm going to do my best to do the actions as well as the words. Let's go from this place today, trusting in the voice of God, whispered in the soft brush of wings, just says sweep hands high and gently down like wings, okay. <laughs> Trusting in the hands of Christ, offering to help when we feel small. Trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power, making a strong gesture. <laughs> that reminds us of a larger story Let's go in peace. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Bedford United, you're very kind. <laughs> Let's rise out, together if you're able and we'll sing the chorus of God with us. And remember, God's with you. Not just at Christmas, but all year round. 